Welcome to Little Bites at Big Multiplication. In this lesson I'm learning to solve multiplication and division problems using factors of factors. Let's imagine there's eight classrooms and in each of those classrooms there's 32 students. And I want to work out how many students there are in total. And over here you can see I've got my eight groups of 32. Now I'm going to start by working out the factors of 8. Well, 8 can be made up by multiplying 2 by 4. Now 2 is a prime number, I can't go any smaller, but with 4 I can. I can make up 4 by going 2 times 2. So if I look at the end of all my branches, you can see I've got a 2 here, a 2 here, and a 2 here. That means if I multiply these together I'll be able to make 8. And we can check that. 2 times 2 is 4 and 4 times 2 is 8. That means we can work out the answer to 8 times 32 by doing it in little bytes. Our first byte can be 2 times 32 and that is where I've got this 2 from. And if we look at this uh, picture over here you can see that I'm talking about two groups of 32. And I know the answer to 2 times 32 is 64. Now if I was to circle another two groups over here, you can see I would have two groups which equaled 64. So I can record that over here as two groups of 64 and I know that the answer to that is 128. Now I got this two here from that 2. And the 64 came because in my first step I worked out 32 times 2 equals 64 and I've got two groups that look like that. So this whole amount over here equals 128. You can see that's half of the total amount. So I know that I've got another group that looks just like it over here. So if this half over here equals 128, then this half over here must also equal 128. So I can record that by saying 2 groups of 128, and I know that that equals 256. Let's just see where I got those numbers from. 2 came from there because that was my last factor. I've used up this 2, used up this 2, used up this 2, and the 128 came from up here because I worked out that um, these four groups all together equaled 128, so I must have two groups of 128. Now let's try this question here. Uh, 15 groups of 9. And over here you can see I've got 15 groups of 9. Well, our first step is to find out what the factors of 15 are. I can see that 3 times 5 is 15. And I can't make 5 in any other way rather than, other than 1 times 5. And same with 3. The only way I can make 3 is going 3 times 1. Because both 3 and 5 are prime numbers. So for our first little bite, let's see what 3 groups of 9 looks like. This is where I've got the 3 from, and this is where the 9 came from. So on our diagram, let's have a look at uh, 3 groups of 9. There we go, you can see I've got 3 groups of 9 in this set. And I know that the answer to 3 times 9 is 27. Now you can see that if I would continued on drawing my shapes, splitting them into groups of three, that I have one, two, three, four, five. Five groups of 27. And I know that 5 times 27 equals 135, so 15 times 9 must equal 135. Let's just have a look at where those numbers came from again. I got this 27 
from here because I knew that 3 groups of 9 equals 27. And I got this 5 because I could see up here that there were 5 groups which looked just like that. And you can see that 5 was also one of the factors of 15. Now let's have a look at a division question. Um, I've got 96 tennis balls which I need to share into 12 containers. I'm going to start by working out what the factors of 12 are. Well, I can make 12 by going 2 times 6, and you can see that 2 here is a prime number, so I can't go any smaller than that, but 6 isn't. I can make 6 up by going 2 times 3, and both 2 and 3 are prime numbers. So I can make up 12 by going 2 times 2, which is 4, and 4 times 3, which is 12. So now I can know that 96 divided by 12 would be the same as going 96 divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 3. So let's start with 96 divided by 2, and let's see what that looks like. It means I'm starting with 96, and I'm splitting 96 into two groups. And I know that 96 divided by 2 uh, gives me 48. So I'll write that in here. So I've done that part, now I'm going to divide by another 2. So now I've got 48, which I need to split into two groups. So I'll draw that onto my picture again, and I know that 48 split into two groups means I'll have 24 in each group. So I'll write that in the answer in down here. Now my third factor of 12 was 3, so now I'm going to split this 24 into 3 groups. So I'll show what that looks like on this picture here. Each of these are being split into 3 groups. And I know that 24 divided by 3 is 8, so I'm going to write 8 at the bottom of all of these. So the answer to 96 divided by 12 must be 8, and you could double check that by counting up all of these 8s here, and you'd see that there are 12 groups, and they added together to make 96. Let's have a look at one more division question. Uh, this time I've got 75 tennis balls, which need to be shared into 15 containers. Well, just like last time, I'm going to look for the factors of 15, and I can make 15 up by going 3 times 5, and both 5 and 3 are prime numbers. So I'm going to start by going 75 divided by 5. Now I could have chosen 3 first of all, but I just find it easier to go 75 divided by 5. Let's have a look what that looks like. Here is my 75, which I am splitting into 5 groups. Now I know that 75 divided by 5 is 15, so at the end of all of these, I'm writing 15, and I'll write that in over here. So I've done this part, I've divided 75 by 5. Now I need to divide it by 3. So each of these groups over here have got 15 in them, and now I'm sharing them into three more groups. 15 divided by 3, I know the answer is 5, and I'll draw that on my diagram here. Each of these groups being split into three more groups, and inside each of these, there will be five tennis balls. And if you wanted to, you could check by counting up all of these here, and you'd see that there are 15 groups, and if you added them all together, you'd see that they made 75. So 75 divided by 15 must equal 5. I hope you found this lesson helpful. For more lessons, check out teachertools.co.nz.